Well, let's start this seminar. Uh, thanks, uh, first of all, uh, to all the participants. We have many participants registered today, uh, most 80. Now many people are connecting. And uh, we have a great speaker. So I have the honor to introduce uh, this uh, seminar on uh, quantifying relational value in B2B implications for AI. And uh, I personally, and on behalf of the Research Center, I thank uh, Sharmila Chatterjee. And sorry, Sharmila, if I it's not the right pronunciation, uh, who is a senior lecturer in marketing uh, at MIT Sloan School of Management. Uh, it's a big honor to have uh, you with us, uh, also because uh, you are a, an expert in uh, B2B. And um, also, it's very important your contribution because uh, the, the school uh, is very focused uh, on B2B marketing. Uh, uh, in industrial marketing, there is uh, a, a group of uh, colleagues uh, uh, and I think uh, many of them are connected today to this webinar that uh, since a long time they are studying industrial marketing. Uh, and uh, one of the goals of this uh, research center uh, on artificial intelligence in value creation is uh, to look at how the uh, artificial intelligence is bringing value uh, also in industrial marketing, uh, which is the focus of today. So how artificial intelligence and um, the evolution of the technology can have an impact uh, on the network and the relations in the network, in the ecosystem, in the platform. This is something that we strongly observe uh, and uh, our research is uh, very focused also in this direction. We are looking at also value creation in uh, human uh, interaction and human behavior. But uh, this part on industrial marketing, which is very appealing, very new um, and very emerging, uh, is uh, very interesting to explore. So uh, just uh, for you, Sharmila, I briefly introduce, uh, we have uh, launched uh, for the third year the seminar series in value creation, where we invite uh, uh, high-level scholars from all around the world, uh, the experts in different fields, because the ambition of the research center is to be multidisciplinary. And so we have invited people from information system, we have uh, sociology, or uh, also from uh, strategy management. Uh, so we look at different perspectives and our reflections during um, the seminar series is really to think uh, how artificial intelligence and technology, the disruptive technology are bringing value or allow us uh, to think in a new way also the existing uh, knowledge around the, the topic that we are studying. So this year uh, we have already added our third, the, our free or better four seminar. Uh, you are now our guest speaker today, but uh, the series go on. Uh, we have one seminar each month with uh, an high level scholar. So we have uh, uh, Theodore Eugenius, Eugenius from INSEAD in next month, then Bjorn Evans uh, in, uh, in March, and then uh, Massimo Eroldi in May, but uh, other scholars are joining. Today, I have the honor to introduce our uh, guest uh, speaker, uh, Sharmila. Thanks again for joining us. Uh, and uh, I spent just two words uh, to introduce you. So Sharmila is a senior lecturer in marketing at MIT Sloan School of Management. But uh, at MIT, she is also academic head for the MBA track in enterprise management. Uh, and uh, she teaches courses in uh, B2B marketing, Deeply engaged in action learning as a faculty mentor for G-Lab, China, India Lab, and uh, she's an instructor for the Enterprise Management Lab. She earned uh, her PhD in marketing from the Wharton School, uh, University of Pennsylvania. And uh, I know Sharmila since a while, and uh, you are also a strong contributor in the research field, and uh, I also... Uh, Highly evaluated your, your paper that you recently published uh, on uh, the role of AI in B2B. So that's why you, you have been invited. Uh, we met last year at, in Sloan, uh, and uh, it was um, uh, it's a really a, a pleasure uh, for, for us to have you with us. I stopped sharing the screen. Uh, so thanks for being with us, and uh, I let uh, the floor to you. Um, thank you so much, Margareta. Um, I really uh, appreciate the opportunity to be uh, able to share my thoughts with uh, your 
uh, audience today. Uh, so I am absolutely uh, delighted to be here. Uh, thank you for the invitation, uh, Professors uh, Margarita Pagani and uh, Professors Ajay Kumar reached out to me uh, for, uh, for this webinar. And I'm delighted to share some thoughts with you uh, today. So let me start by sharing my screen with you. All right, um, so what I am going to talk about today is uh, a brief overview of my research that uh, applies basically the, the, that looks at factors that would help facilitate adoption of innovations. So that's sort of a broader conceptual uh, approach and then I uh, talk about implications for um, AI. So coming from B2B marketing, I'm going to be very focused on the customer side of things. How do you deliver value to customers? And uh, then the effect on customer satisfaction, word of mouth, uh, repurchase intent. So let me just get started. Let me start by sharing a brief um, overview here. Uh, so uh, I will just start very broadly, very briefly about digital transformation and sort of the role of AI in digital transformation. Then very quickly, I am going to uh, talk about the customer experience tie with um, AI customer experience with performance, and uh, some of the areas that AI helps in with delivering superior customer experience, move then to the criticality of the human element. So what I'm really going to talk about today is the importance of the human element in the success of technology adoption and very quickly talk about the first steps. So just starting here, you know, I just like to sort of start with, I will, I will probably share a couple of definitions here. And um, so digital transformation, so what is digital transformation? Sort of I'm talking about the integration of digital technology into all areas of our business, resulting in fundamental changes to how the business operates and how it delivers value to the different um, stakeholders. So the customers, the partners, the um, employees. And so moving forward, uh, wanted to just show you the scale and scope of digital transformation. And what we find is uh, by 2022, it's supposed to be 1.97 um, um, trillion. And then it, it goes on uh, from, from there. So there's huge um, excitement about this area um, in general. And of course, you know, AI is part of this, but they're talking about sort of all the tools as part of the digital transformation. Um, some statistics on... Um, at the global level uh, where they project, um, you know, that that stood um, at some point. So US about a third, but then Western Europe about 20%, China, um, Asia, um, Asia specific and, and so on. So what we are seeing is that globally, uh, it is basically, uh, there is lots of excitement across uh, countries here. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to basically uh, talk about, uh, is, you know, this just shows um, what is the focus of digital transformation working with their clients according to um, agency executives worldwide. And I will share a couple of the perspectives here. So what you see at the very beginning is 
The topmost is improving an existing product service experience. So they are talking about customer experience and that's what I'm going to talk about later today. Um, moving to, so th this is agency executives who were working on digital transformation initiatives for their clients. Then if we look at um, the managerial uh, perspective, so these are uh, companies of technology and business decision makers. Again, what we see is improved customer experience engagement is sort of the top um, goal here. And so uh, what is important to uh, realize is that in order to enhance customer experience, drawing insights from data is critical. And so herein lies the potential of AI because we are inundated with data. We have all kinds of data, uh, but it is having the right kind of data and then massaging that data in order to draw appropriate insights is where uh, the real benefits are. And that's where AI uh, comes in. So I will uh, very briefly therefore talk about the customer experience and what is it? So very briefly again, the brand is a function of customer experience, sort of the customer experience that um, your base has determines the brand trust. The strength of your brand is a, a function very much of the customer. So that's what brand is. And what uh, we had done some um, study um, earlier and found that brand trust is positively related to brand outcomes. So I will share just a couple of quick results from um, the study that we have um, done here. Um, and so the dependent variable we looked at was market share. And what we found was that this was by the way, a cross industry um, um, study. It was a, a huge uh, data set that was um, collected. And what we found, this is not what I'm going to talk about, just going to touch upon it briefly, is brand trust is very much related to market share. And then what we see is share of voice was the other thing. So this is how much is your company or unit spending relative to the industry, share of voice, positive data to market share. But then you see the trusted brands, the interaction of brand trust with share of voice is a dramatic impact on market share. So, so brand is critical and brand trust is a function of customer experience. Um, the other thing we had also so again, found uh, you know was brand trust with advertising efficiency. Um, your advertising uh, performance, what proportion has to be spent relative to sales, and what we found is again brand trust makes your um, advertising efficiency um, go much uh, higher. And then if you have a differentiated product, so it really really helps you if you are a trusted brand because differentiation coupled with trust um, really enhances advertising efficiency. If your brand is not trusted, just differentiation, you see, you know, you need to spend so much money um, if your brand is not trusted. Um, so you can be differentiated, but brand trust is critical to really draw the benefits of differentiation. So basically showing brand trust is critical for performance and brand trust is a function of customer. Experience. So that's sort of the linkage we are talking about here. Um, so Forrester has this customer uh, experience index and it measures how successfully a company delivers customer experience. So it's talking about sort of three facets, effectiveness, 
Um, the experience delivers value to customers. It's not difficult for customers to get value and customers feel good about it. So that's sort of um, their customer in experience in depth. And, uh, you know, so that it helps deliver um, or generate customer loyalty. So if we look at correlation between customer experience score and three loyalty uh, metrics, um, willingness to consider the company for another pur purchase. Once, uh, you know, you see that of course goes up. Likelihood to switch business to a competitor. So your switching likelihood goes down and then recommendation likelihood of uh, recommendation goes up. So again, customer experience is absolutely um, critical. And then there was the study done in 2007 to 2017, customer experience leaders outperform the market. So this is the standard and poor 500 um, index, S&P index. This was the performance for the companies in the S&P 500. You see customer experience laggards are underperforming significantly. And then you see customer experience leaders overperforming the S&P 500. Again, just goes to show the criticality of customer experience here. Um, high growth companies prioritize customer experience. So this is high growth, low to moderate growth. And again, you are seeing the difference here. Um, uh, just showing some statistics quickly to show the, uh, the importance of investing and uh, dedicating resources to customer experience. So if you see, again, resource allocation high versus low growth, um, so, you know, very quickly showing that data analytics, that's what I was saying, the importance of where AI can really play a role. You see that high growth companies, they are emphasizing data analytics to a significantly higher um, extent uh, compared to the low to moderate growth companies. However, what we also see, unfortunately, companies, uh, you know, they could do much better on customer experience. So um, this is business buyers and this is household consumers. So we are seeing 67% of customers say their standards for good experiences are higher than ever, right? So their expectations are really high. But then they're also saying that their expectations are not being met to a full extent. So there's room for improvement here and AI can definitely help us get there. So there's potential for improvement. Um, and the other thing is personalization is key to winning business. So here then comes that customization and we know in B2B, customization is so, so critical. So customers are saying, you know, we basically uh, want to be treated sort of, you know, one at a time in a customized uh, manner, uh, and that will be very helpful. So, so there is room for contributing to enhancing customer experience and, um, the customer is one of the critical things is personalization. That customization is really, really helpful. So if you have data uh, that helps you generate insights to help you deliver on that, that's going to be of invaluable contribution. Um, and so uh, basically uh, what I want to now talk about is uh, very quickly um, sort of the the areas that AI can help in with regard to a customer experience. And I'm going to focus on one, one aspect, of course. Um, and uh, this is not, I'm not going to go over anything technical, it's sort of the conceptual part of where AI can, um, can help. So it, very quickly, we sort of look at, you know, the touch points. Um, in B2B. So, you know, the human touch points, the sales calls, the service calls, events, uh, web chat, webinars, and so on. 
um, you of course have you know digital touch points um, like website visits, content engagement, and so on. Then you of course have the social touch points, the blogs, the tweets, the likes, and so on. So there are you know various touch points, and um, you can of course. Um, uh, get a lot of data from across the touch points where you're sort of mapping, say, the customer journey and help generate, uh, massage the data to get insights that will help you hopefully uh, move towards a greater customer experience. And so what we find though, that information so when we are talking data i'm using you know source information that you have one of the big uh, challenges is information silos that data resides in these different places how do you sort of bring them together to generate critical insights that help you deliver in an integrated fashion uh, better experience across the different touch points. Whenever the customer is experiencing um, uh, your brand during its, uh, its journey. So there are communication coordination challenges. They exist both internally within the company where you, know, you have different um, uh, functions, different areas, different units in the business. So they exist, you know, cross-functional silos um, exist where they don't talk to each other. Um, and then also the external stakeholders, your um, supply chain, your business partners. So information, when they are in silos, it's very uh, difficult to really, uh, you know, deliver in a uniform high level when you do not share information. So information silos exist internally and externally and AI tools can really improve um, this coordination and communication challenges to help break down these um, silos. That can of course result in greater efficiency, more synchronization, less sort of tunnel vision where you're looking at things from your own perspective and sort of ignoring the heterogeneity um, that exists across the different domains. Um, so just, you know, again, um, quickly uh, the definition. So what is AI and you see sort of, you know, people think about it in different, different ways. Um, what I like is, you know, human is very much here, you know, so, uh, so that's the aspect I'm going to talk about today. Um, the research was very much uh, on that. And um, so uh, so some words, you know, that came up when um, the clients were asked. And so again, just, you know, a quick definition here is basically um, AI applies advanced analysis and logic-based techniques, including machine learning to interpret events, support and automate decisions and take um, actions. So again, very much it is about interpretation and support for um, decisions. So using um, your data insights to help make better decisions is what uh, AI um, really has the potential to do. So just, uh, you know, we'll give one example each. Um, so intra-organizational silos, so people.ai, it is, um, you know, a revenue intelligent marketing platform, improves internal collaboration uh, between sales marketing. And basically uh, they, uh, they state, they are claiming anyway, that um, their marketing driven uh, pipeline with it, helps really reduce wastage to um, when the customer is moving along um, the pipeline um, to be able to then convert those leads successfully and it uh, reduces waste. So again, this is just sales marketing alignment, but you know, there's potential for, um, you know, going cross-functionally. 
Uh, and that's the challenge. Uh, it, it needs to be deployed in a more holistic manner as opposed to a lot of things are being done piecemeal at this point, but just shows the potential of what. So this is sort of an example of intra-organizational silo. And then there are inter-organizational, like the outside um, of the company. And this, uh, so example is, uh, this is a logistics um, company, um, UPS um, in the US. And they have a tool which basically integrates pickup and delivery um, um, system. So you have the customer and uh, the, the destination uh, place and they are bringing them together. And so what the tool does is facilitates the engineers to make better decisions and it is customized. Um, so for example, for pharmaceuticals, they will route it in a way that it doesn't go through the warmer uh, routes and, and so on. So uh, the previous example, this, you know, we were talking about sort of how do you make uh, functions talk to you, like sales and marketing, the previous, the people.ai was sort of um, communication coordination. And here, all of those things, you know, uh, communication coordination, and you are customizing sort of, you know, where uh, the routing. Um, so those three things um, are very, very helpful um, to do, sort of communication, coordination, and customization. Uh, so uh, breaking silos, therefore, is very, very helpful. It helps you understand the needs, capabilities, constraints across units, both internal and external. So facilitating communication, uh, coordination, customization, and so AI's promise is to create more connected and coordinated systems inside and out. And so if implemented successfully, and that's the big thing, implementation is critical here, can go uh, in helping make silos a thing of the past. So this is sort of you know, a summary. Uh, so AI has the potential to positively influence the three Cs of superlative experience, communication to assess customer needs, a value delivery potential coordination to help deliver value. And then of course, customization, because we saw in the data that I shared with you, personalization was very, very um, critical. So uh, basically, you know, and this is sort of works in an integrated route, right? So it is sort of iterative. It's, uh, uh, things need to be done in a coordinated, holistic manner, and it's an iterative loop that, uh, it, so this is in the ideal world, <laughs> is what uh, we are striving towards. Um, so basically what I was trying to say is AI has the potential to deliver on customer experience, but of course there is potential and then there is realization of that potential. And that's what we want to talk about. Um, so what we see is organizations have a long road ahead. So just recently um, in um, 2020, October 2020, BCG and MIT Sloan Management Review, they had this big uh, report that came out. And just 11% of companies find significant returns on AI investments. So we talked about the potential and then we are seeing where the implementation is. And so it is helpful to start addressing the implementation challenges to see how uh, we can do better. So, uh, moving so here and I will I will talk about the research study um, that we did and which finds the criticality of the human element. Um, so so this is basically research showing the invaluable role of the human uh, interface for customer satisfaction, retention, and advocacy. And um, 
So this was a study um, done with um, a former doctor student. He, he actually uh, was very interested in technology implementation, ha has an interesting uh, background. So Tony, um, he was uh, a non-traditional, if we say, a doctoral um, student. So he did his uh, undergraduate in math and then he became um, a partner at Accenture and um, and what he saw was technology implementation failures over and over and over again. So, so basically, was very important for him to know, you know, what could we do to help reduce technology implementation failures? And so that's sort of, you know, where uh, we were coming from for this. Uh, so the business problem was what is the relative impact of core product service uh, versus value mindset? And I will define this. Um, so the value mindset this is the human interface on customer satisfaction, word of mouth and repurchase intent. Um, this was a very comprehensive study. So this paper actually, um, the appendix has the complete sort of literature review because the literature spans disciplines. And I will give you sort of a very quick glimpse into that. Um, I'm not going to go into any depth, but just to, um, I will show you the sort of the literature, but one of the things, because we are focusing on the human element here, so just want to show you what you see is sort of B2B sellers, self versus human assistive service, and the good news, so this is across uh, products, so digital products, high cost products, low cost, simple, subscription, repeat purchase, um, services, first time complex products, all kinds of, so they slice and dice in different ways. And this is the blue, what we see is that most of them, you know, about the blue one is, you know, um, sort of um, the self assist. But the good news is that most of them, at least the majority in, involve human assistance here. So, uh, so this one, you know, this is some self, uh, mostly self-service, some human assistant. But from here on, you are seeing, you know, humans are very much a part of the mix. And um, which is the good, good news here is to see that humans are part of the mix, but how can we do uh, better? So to just, as I'm going to the research study uh, now, um, the motivation was, you know, we were looking at the business intelligence space, the BI software. And this was growth of services in the software business model. So what is the implication? So giving services are so important. Um, goods versus services marketing. Services is becoming very, very critical. So what does it mean to be customer outcome focused? Because what we want is customer value delivery. And what kind of resources matter most? Okay, um, so we assume, so once you have a competitive product, if your product is not good, then you know, there's nothing to talk about, right? But once you have a competitive product, where do you allocate your resources to really maximize customer value delivery so that they realize value of course, leading to satisfaction, repurchase, and so on. And we wanted to look at once technology is deployed in an organization, so we are talking about innovations, new technology coming into your organization, how do you make that technology be assimilated within the company? Because if technology is deployed and no one uses this, that is when implementation failures happen. You know, so you can deploy all the technology you want, but if it is not assimilated, that's when the breakdown happens. So how do you facilitate intra-organizational assimilation and success of technological innovations? Can sellers help? 
And so the test case was business intelligence systems here. So the conceptual model, um, so this is a very complex model, very comprehensive. So I'm going to touch upon just the results, but just to show you sort of what we looked at. Um, so we were looking at sort of seller capabilities, um, core, capabilities, so product knowledge, service orientation. So when we are talking about service orientation, just sort of reliability, responsiveness, and so on, that's the service orientation. And then is the augmented capability. This is the value mindset. So what is the value mindset? As I had said, this is the human interface that we were operationalizing. So basically the value mindset is understanding the buyer's business context, understanding the changes that need to be made. So change management, very important changes that need to be made in the buyer's business context to deliver, um, to really extract value. Legacy processes, if legacy processes are used with an innovation, oftentimes value cannot be extracted. So change management is very, very important. Uh, the third aspect is basically sharing of best business practices with your customer and learnings from failures to also be shared. So basically understand the buyer's business context. How do you make sure, what are the changes that need to be made at the buyer's organization to be able to extract value? And as part of that process, of course, you are also sharing best business practices and learnings from failure. So that's the uh, value mindset. And then we looked at the services score, which is sort of, uh, you know, this is project management, legacy um, um, system integration, training, and so on and so forth. Um, and so what we said, these were seller capabilities. And then this is assimilation. The um, innovation is now, say, what leads to assimilation of that innovation within our organization? Because if innovation is not used, it's an implementation failure. So the facilitators, we looked at user enablement, management support, the potential of that value, uh, value delivery, and the outcomes where is it being utilized, the extent of utilization, how much it is becoming institutionalized as part of that organization, and realize value. That is the value delivery. Are you getting value from that? And then, of course, once you have the realized value, you have, you know, um, we uh, looked at the satisfaction, the customer satisfaction, basically. Um, so, as I was saying, just, you know, to give you a glimpse, the literature, so as I said, we put the literature actually in the appendix of this paper because it's so diverse and discussed across uh, disciplines. So, uh, relevant research is, you know, just cuts across literature uh, streams from relationship management, customer value to technology ad uh, adoption to technology management, MIS, and so on. So it's a very dispersed um, literature that has looked at this. Um, and um, again, you know, we looked at, again, just the literature uh, about B2B sellers and buyers. Sellers, what do they strive for? High quality relationships, so satisfaction, commitment, trust. So there's a literature there. Um, the four P's, instrumental factors, the product, the price, the promotion, the place, um, the relational norms that exist, customer value, market orientation, um, literature. There's literature on key account management capabilities, service augmentation, service orientation. So that's sort of the seller's literature. And then industrial bias, so, so the B2B bias, sort of in the seller reputation, resource commitment, trust and knowledge of the seller, relational bonds with seller, tacit knowledge, leakage risk, organizational readiness, um, and so on. So 
so the literature is vast here um, and sort of how to sort of bring it together. And therefore our, uh, we ran into collect, uh, data collection challenges because we needed to collect data on so many variables here. Uh, so the methodology was, um, it was a two phase mixed methods uh, methodology. Phase one was qualitative. So we wanted to refine and validate the research model. Um, so this was depth interviews basically. And then quantitative, this was uh, the, the survey that was done to test the hypotheses. So we talked to experts, uh, you know, we talked to the sellers, uh, we talked to the buyers. So we talked um, sort of across the stakeholders to refine and validate our model, the conceptual model. And then we had the phase two, which was a survey that was done. Um, I'm going to sort of, you know, move uh, through some of these things very quickly, you know, so it was, uh, so we had a very uh, diverse group of companies that were uh, participating here, uh, revenue size, all the way going from one to 10 million to, um, you know, greater than um, a billion employee size, as you can say, responsible employee size. So it was, you know, cross industry. So it was a very uh, um, broad set of uh, respondents we looked at. We can forget about this. We don't have to look. Um, so um, so I, I will talk about the main uh, uh, findings. Uh, uh, so the conceptualization, again, just because of the importance of this uh, particular construct, this was the human interface. So the conceptualization was understands how, so the application was BI, business intelligence systems, understands how BI can add value to the customer's business. The number two was the understands the scope of change required in the customer's business to realize value. So this is the change management. Um, so again, um, legacy processes with innovations really hinder extracting value from um, the innovation. Sharing of the best business practices of other companies and lessons learned from failures because as the seller, one has cross industry experience because they know what worked and what did not work. So they're in a great position to share best business practices and learnings from failures. And so here is uh, what the results, uh, you know, very quickly um, to just show you what we found was, um, so core product expertise, you know, we indexed on that because if you don't have core product expertise, then the customers cannot derive value. I mean, that's a necessary condition. It's not a sufficient condition for real, for clients realizing value. This is the realized value. So what we were looking at is clients realized value. So if you think about the conceptual model that I shared with you, once technology is assimilated and starts getting institutionalized, then you should start realizing value. And so um, we saw effect of value mindset on clients uh, realized value is dominant. So this is value mindset. And um, so we, we did our model estimation and everything. So these were, we uh, combined the added and the, the direct and the indirect effects through the different uh, paths. So we so the, the structural equation model paths that we added. So, so this is, um, once we did the effects, I'm just showing you in a bar chart here. Um, and so you see the value mindset is dominant effect human interface is absolutely critical. And then we see, again, similar results of the value mindset on relationship satisfaction. So companies that really get this holistic understanding of the buyer's business context and pathway to value, they have a dramatically higher level of customer satisfaction as much as a three to one effect uh, relative to uh, just core product expertise. 
as I said, core, this is a necessary condition. If you don't have core product expertise, I mean, that's, <laughs> we shouldn't talk about anything. But then when you are allocating resources, uh, once you have a competitive offering, the human interface is absolutely critical. And so uh, basically seller's value mindset is critical for long-term uh, success. And so this is the soft service facet reflecting a holistic understanding of the buyer's business context, value creation potential, and pathway to value. And the effect of value mindset is 60% greater than that of the core product knowledge. And sellers that convey this value mindset on markedly higher levels of customer relationship satisfaction as much as a three to one effect. And now I want to show you sort of the relational impact going beyond satisfaction to word of mouth. And so here, what you see is again, just path coefficients, um, relational satisfaction to word of mouth and repurchase intent. So basically dominant effect of the human interface is the value mindset which plays the dominant role in building positive customer relationships and uh, customer retention. So this is very, very important. So, so what do companies do? Basically, balancing efficiency and effectiveness is absolutely critical. Um, technology is efficient and uh, so they are, you know, we lean towards and, and companies may think, oh, you know, let's just do everything, you know, let's go tech, 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 um, because that's efficient. But human beings are expensive, but effective. So you are constantly sort of juggling the two, efficiency and effectiveness. You have to balance the two. Uh, treating human beings very much as part of the equation in order to help extract uh, value from technological innovations. And that is what, so we looked at the assimilation of technology, the institutionalization of technology. So the human interface is critical in doing that. So there is a great book uh, <laughs> which you know came out, I think it's nice, The Technology Fallacy, How People Are the Real Key to Digital Transformation. So 2019 uh, book, it's a sort of, you know, again, just emphasizes the um, role of, of the humans. And um, the study that I just shared with you um, that takes, uh, that sort of really shows, quantifies the, impact of the human interface. Like we all talk about human interface all the time, but it really quantifies it. Um, so uh, I see, okay, I am sort of uh, uh, have about 10 minutes, I, I think. Uh, uh, so just uh, moving quickly, I actually want to share, um, hopefully we'll have time to share a video with you about uh, digital mindsets. Uh, so let's see. Um, so I will go quickly through some things. Um, um, so, so this is just, you know, first steps planning for success. Uh, I think um, top management decision to be, of course, you know, it's, it's, again, the mindset, uh, the decision to be analytics insights uh, driven organization. Um, change management is critical. So organizational workflows, processes, um, assess potential for AI incorporation into the organizational workflows and processes. Um, phased AI strategy, keeping ethical considerations, actually don't have time to elaborate on that, are very important uh, because of so much data being involved. Uh, it, that is one of the important areas that is being discussed more and more in a AI now. Um, of course, um, allocate needed resources, time, money, human capital. This is absolutely critical. Uh, grassroots support, again, this is the human facet because the human beings have to um, really uh, use it and assimilate and institutionalize it. Uh, 
and of course, you know, again, human capital, expertise and skills. These are all human elements. And of course, start with the low hanging fruit, say customer facing prices. So coming from marketing, that's, you know, what makes sense. But also as you, sh uh, as I shared with you initially, the statistics, customer experience is being put as sort of the number one goal of many of these digital transformation initiatives. Um, so, uh, you know, pilot, iterate, learn. So it's an iterative loop. Uh, you know, we are still in the very initial phases. So that's sort of planning for success. And then um, implementation, I think I will uh, just uh, go for through this very, very quickly here. Uh, okay, let's just move. Uh, um, so I want to share with you um, so important factors for successful AI um, adoption uh, within companies in the US. So compelling business case, uh, strategic vision and or commitment to AI from senior management. So this is management support. Very important, uh, building trust with employees, customers and regulators. I, I, I think that um, you know, that trust within the company, making your employees feel comfortable is very, very important. That's why I want to share the video about the digital mindset. There's a nice paper that came out uh, that I want to share with you. Um, cross enterprise uh, collaboration um, and, and so on, workforce that understands. So, so you see that the human element through and through and through is, um, is in some way, shape or form, very much a part of what they are talking about here. So again, the human um, element, you will see, you know, um, established new ways of working, of course, skills gaps, sort of future versus current skills required, train and develop new employees, train employees with digital skills, focus on uh, retaining, engaging, developing existing employees. So the employees, um, so the human capital is an integral part of, um, of these initiatives. Again, that we need to really pay attention to. And so this is a paper um, that was published, um, Digital uh, Mindset, Harnessing Employee Potential that uh, came out in the California Management Review. There was this, um, um, special issue that they published. And so um, just wanted to show you, so there I will show you the video first and then uh, maybe it's a short video, so two and a half minutes. Can you hear? Yes, perfect. The fourth industrial revolution involving the technological automation of traditional business practices is gaining increased managerial attention. However, the growing movement towards digital transformation needs to include smaller scale initiatives aimed at increasing both efficiency and effectiveness. Employees, not just technology, are critical to the success of these initiatives. Yet the majority of research on the topic focuses on traditional, top-down models emphasizing technology acceptance and adoption. Not enough research addresses why and how employees voluntarily engage in the digital transformation process. Social cognition research shows that people rely on simplifying strategies when faced with increasing complexity and uncertainty in their environment. Managers overseeing digital transformation should consider their employees' digital mindsets, meaning employees' beliefs about their personal and situational resources in the midst of technological change. Doing this influences an employee's engagement, or lack thereof, in digital initiatives. Fixed mindsets versus growth mindsets refer to differences in individual beliefs about personal intelligence or ability. These beliefs result in different responses across job tasks and situations. Zero-sum and expendable-sum mindsets are derived from game theory and refer to individuals' choices to either cooperate or compete over interdependent outcomes. These mindsets influence whether employees see new technology either as providing growth opportunities or as encroaching on their ability to display competency. Individuals would benefit from becoming aware of their digital mindset and analyzing whether the basis for their beliefs is grounded in truth. It's important to challenge one's own assessment of whether one can learn and use the new technologies being introduced. 
and to decide whether these technologies will require more resources or provide new opportunities. To learn more, read Digital Mindsets, Recognizing and Leveraging in These beliefs result in different responses across job tasks and situations. Zero sum and expendable sum. Okay, so I will um, close this one now. Uh, and can you see my screen? Yes, yes. Okay, perfect. Um, so basically, uh, so you saw sort of a quick um, snapshot of that paper. What they're talking about is people's beliefs about whether or not um, they are capable or their capabilities are malleable enough to really learn and adapt and work with the technology. So they talk about fixed and growth mindsets. And then they talk about uh, basically uh, their zero sum versus expandable sum. And that means whether or not they are um, comfortable uh, working uh, with the technology and they consider technology as a collaborative tool as opposed to they think that, you know, technology is competing with them. So that's sort of an, if you think it's zero sum, then you're not so enthusiastic about uh, that working with technology as opposed to if you think, you know, it's not going to, it's really going to help you and help collaborate, it's not going to replace you. Um, and the uh, uh, fixed versus growth mindset is, you know, growth means you see yourself as being competent and you have the ability to learn and grow with the technology. So basically, does it mean that, so you need to, as a company, really work with your employees to give them the confidence that they are capable of working uh, with the technology and at the same um, time, you know, train them and give them um, uh, try to mold their uh, mindset. But at the same time, you know, you will have a heterogeneity uh, amongst our employees. So allocate them to the right kinds of tasks and teams that is compatible with their digital mindset. So, so that is uh, something that was uh, good. So just, you know, wrapping up here um, again, you know, some of the people and process barriers, uh, for the uh, transformation initiatives. And again, you know, digital talent is of course very, uh, very Im important here. So to wrap up, I know that we are, um, just want to wrap up very quickly. We are sort of at the one hour mark here. So in conclusion, um, what I uh, want to just say again is uh, we started with the importance of customer experience. And we saw that brand is a function of customer experience. Customer experience will thrive when we use digital technology and human as complements, not substitutes. Um, AI power tools can help eliminate part of that requirement is that coordination and customization. And so AI powered tools can help eliminate information silos by facilitating the communication, coordination, customization. Um, and we know that human interface though is critical. And the reason is relational ties cannot be outsourced to technology. So with that, um, thank you so much uh, for your time today. Um, and so let me stop my share here. Okay. <laughs> thank you greatly, Sharmila. Thanks uh, for this uh, very clear uh, and uh, very insightful uh, speech, uh, because uh, we know that in the industrial marketing, we are start reflecting about the role of uh, okay, digital transformation, at in particular the AI, and this is uh, very interesting to debate. Uh, we have received already many questions in the Q&A. Maybe I leave uh, AJ is the moderator for this uh, Q&A session, maybe to... <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Shamila, for, for giving this wonderful talk. And uh, you explained very well how the organization can examine the influence of the 
seller resources if a particular organization adopted the business intelligence on the ai system and then how, or how can an organization use the communication coordination and the customization for making the better marketing strategy and profits if the organization has implemented the ai system so uh, as you know that every successful seminar has a q and a session so we have a large number of participants in this seminar so i am expecting that they are going to ask several questions and we have already received three four questions so i just wanted to open the platform for the participants yes so, the q uh, and a there yeah, is so a ready yeah margarita uh, So, 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 so let's start is maybe possible, with... yeah if if we, if we are new to the participants or is it the only one way they have to write the question in the q and a chat box only in the q and a uh, we can open uh, in case you raise the hand uh, we can open the micro by the way we can start with esteban avila mm-hmm. uh, she's a mba program here in amlion uh, i was wondering which are the key internal factors that the company should focus on in order to incorporate digitalization and ya yeah, into oh. its business There are publication books uh, or somewhere to look forward into this. Mm-hmm. Regards, uh, thanks for the webinar. Thank you. Um, yeah, so one of the areas uh, that I think is sort of the low hanging fruit is actually the customer facing side of the, the business. So starting with sales and marketing. So a lot of companies have started uh, you know with the um with the sales uh, tracking the lead management systems where they are starting to incorporate information about potential customers who send in inquiries and then they also as part of that they do some level of lead qualification which means that to assess the quality of the leads and then they will do lead scoring so leads uh, are basically potential customers and, and so uh um, probably sales marketing um uh, sales and marketing are good areas to start um uh, initially because i think that's the lowest hanging fruit and um can really the improve the productivity many times of sales people um uh, because they, it automates some of the mundane uh task of scheduling and um and so on Um, so that's where I would say is a good place to start. Okay, yeah. and yeah, the next question we have received from the Elsa. Uh, can you tell us how the digital transformation market revenue has measured for your chart? Um, uh, uh, how, how the sorry? Can you repeat that the latter uh, part, please? Can you tell us how the digital transformation market revenue was measured for your chart? that you discussing your ppt um oh How the that, chart yeah yeah chart um okay so should i just go to, go to that um go go to that um slide do you think so he maybe, wants to ju- about yeah, maybe, the, about the market's estimates you mean yes yes maybe you can just explain without sharing the slides um Yeah so basically uh, I that... can uh, open the micro to Elsa uh, Elsa okay. if you want uh, you can uh... Oh hello uh, everybody um yes um uh, it is a uh, thank you a lot uh, professor uh, i'd like to know about uh, the, the slide um how the re- the market revenues uh, were measured because uh what uh, has been uh, taken into account is this uh, uh that, that corresponds to the sales of uh, software or uh, ai equipment or what is included in the in the digital transformation market revenue because it can be very large and uh, uh basically what is uh, what does uh, correspond it to Um, yeah so you know so this is basically uh the data that um uh, that i had uh taken from uh, one of the um 
one of the uh, consulting major consulting companies. So I think that that's an excellent question about you know what encompasses the market potential when they are showing this multi-trillion dollar uh, market. And um, so, so I am basically recollecting here um, from my uh, memory. So to the best of my recollection, they were basically looking at uh, uh, both software and hardware that uh, would be uh, would be uh, needed, but digital transformation, I think, uh, if I remember, they were talking about um, IoT, uh, robotics, AI, all of those were part of this computation. Okay, thank you. Okay, we so have uh, another question by Manuel De Palma. He's okay. asking, uh, you talk extensively about the value mindset uh, and uh, customer experience. Uh, what is your thoughts uh, on specialization done by AI and most alone? Um, yeah, so, the, um, so basically um, in the research, we were looking at the, uh, at the human interface in terms, so, so the tools that we looked at were the human, um, um, the human competence in their ability to assess the business context of the customer, the ability to assess the change management needed and the practice of sharing best business practices and learning from failure. So those are the parts of the human interface that were operationalized in the value uh, mindset. So I, so 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 we were basically, and the application tool was business intelligence. So in the context of the tool of business intelligence, how did the human facet of business context assessment, change management assessment, and sharing of knowledge help in assimilation of BI? in the customer's company. Does that answer your question or am I missing something? Anuel, maybe. Yes, perfect. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Great. We have then another question by an anonymous is uh, in your assimilation oriented conceptual model, I understand that you are leaning to real time data is uh, an ultimate goal essence of, of efficiency and effectiveness. What are your thoughts on that? Um, yeah, so basically um, the assimilation was the extent to which the BI software was being used at an institutional level in the company. And so that was the measure of assimilation. Uh, and then my comment about we have to balance effectiveness and efficiency that is a statement I am making. That is not something we measured in the study. So in the study, what we found was the human interface was absolutely critical in the success of, uh, of BI systems uh, being assimilated and having the potential to give value to the customer. But then what I am saying is human interface is, at in, is the most expensive component. We know that human beings, employees account for a huge proportion of the cost of a company. Um, so technology is much more efficient compared to a human. Humans are very, very effective. So for a company, so based on the results of my study, of our study, what I am recommending is that companies need to balance effectiveness and efficiency. Because many times, unfortunately, 
if companies go too quickly with technology without making the necessary investment in human capital, it is not going to be a good outcome for the customer. And that's where we will see repeated implementation failures. So it's very important for the company to balance efficiency and effectiveness. And that's an inference I'm drawing based on the study results. So does that make sense? Um, so it's, you know, I cannot see the audience, but uh, yeah. so yeah, please let me, if, if, you, uh, okay. if there's a continuing question, please let me know. Okay, yeah. okay. the next question uh, we have received from the Mohammed. Uh, how can sellers help buyers to assimilate and use efficiently AI innovations from a change management perspective? Yeah, so basically that is where the human interface comes in. The person or the team, oftentimes, you know, the team basically uh, needs to interact with the client to understand the business processes because they need to map out the process. So, so these systems are, you know, they have a long selling cycle, right? So you go, so the, the team from the vendor really needs to understand and map out the client's processes wherever they are being implemented to then consult with them on which of their legacy processes. So legacy is you know, what they were doing before they were going to adopt this new, um, this innovation. Um, and once they map out, they need to basically work hand in hand with the client organization to make sure that the change management happens. Because without those leg uh, legacy processes being adapted to the new technology, it is very difficult to really deliver the value intended by the innovation. And uh, Shamila, if you allow, I have a question for you that yeah. is in line of what we are exploring. So you show it very well, very clear how AI can be integrated with human capital that is still at the center, in particular in B2B, where customization, customer relationship is uh, at the center of uh, the, the success of a B2B company. Uh, I'm, uh, reflecting uh, in mm -hmm. the study, so I don't expect an answer, so maybe your reflection, how AI can foster new abilities. Uh, uh, you mentioned seller, you mentioned the human interface with customers, so the, the human side of relationship with the customer. So about your uh, view, how AI can foster new skills or new task that maybe the human uh, can uh, focus more and so how to guide also the educational steps uh, the new skills that the, 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 the new manager to acquire if we look at these uh, new abilities or new tasks uh, new processes uh, that maybe humans will be allowed to do in the future oh, oh uh, i couldn't agree with you more you are absolutely um, correct about that um and, uh, you know, again, uh, this is speculation, um, mm. you know, sort yeah. of projecting forward. I really think that, um, you know, this very traditional um, uh, concept of uh, learning curve and experience effects, uh, right? So over time, we know that when we do a task over time, we learn more, we do it more efficiently, effectively. There is this very real experience and learning effect. And so as we, uh, as AI, you know, starting out for sure, we, it will do the very sort of mundane automated kinds of tasks. So it will release time for us to be able to focus on the more value added activities. You know, mm -hmm. at, at this point in time, a lot of times we are spending sort of routinized automated stuff that we keep doing. 
that is taking away from our thinking time. Mm -hmm. And as humans, our thinking time is very, very important as opposed to just doing, doing, doing. And so this uh, concept of learning effect and experience effect combined with release of time to be able to focus on let's say thinking time and more creative time and positive will lead to a novel, more innovative ways of doing things because you know, human creativity, I mean, imagine where we started and where we are, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think it has the potential to um, release time to, for us to be creative again, once we get through this process where we are still learning, mm -hmm. right? So we mm -hmm. are mm -hmm. in the very initial stages now. So now we are taking more time to really master or, you know, even get comfortable, let's say, and then mastery will come. And then we will, I am positive, will unleash this great set of new creative tasks and things we will be able to do once we get to that stage. Thanks, in particular in industrial marketing where the relationship with the customer is very important. So be creative also in this relationship and uh, fixing the problem. So thanks for this answer. Eh? It's very, very useful. Yeah. We have received another question from the Rupesh Kumar. Uh, would you say AI assisted service would have a better impact in service focused business like travel and tourism sector or, or does it depends on the business? Yeah, so I think that AI um, has the potential to make contribution across business domains, um, be it uh, product-centered or service-centered. Uh, it will be very much contingent on the specific uh, business. Um, of course, um, the way that AI, the specific way in which the tool is used is going to be different. Uh, but, you know, these basic concepts I talked about, about these information silos, they exist in service businesses and product business. The communication needs, the coordination needs, the customization needs, they uh, permeate across businesses. So you're absolutely right that um, the adaptation will need to be customized by the industry, but the general conceptualization and benefits should permeate across industries. So great, uh, we have no more question in the chat. Yes, yeah, no, we don't have any other question. Perfect. Yeah. So Sharmila, thank you greatly for, uh, for this uh, seminar, for this webinar. It's really, really uh, very value, big value added. And uh, thanks uh, to all the participants. Uh, we had a huge number of participants for this seminar. So almost 50 uh, during uh, the, the webinar. So thanks. And um, thank you, Ajay and Salma, for their help in organizing this seminar. And thanks to Sharmila for this uh, very insightful uh, contribution. Oh, thank you so much, Margarita and Ajay, for this invitation. Um, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, and uh, thank you to the audience for the wonderful questions. Uh, you know, uh, interaction is great in, in webinars. And so, really appreciate your engagement and asking all the, all the questions. Thank you again for the opportunity um, and have a great rest of the day. Thank you again. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, thank you so much, Sharmila, for giving your valuable time and for this wonderful webinar. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks. And a reminder to all the participants of the next webinar, which is on uh, February 18. So stay in touch for uh, the communication. So thanks, Sharmila. Bye. Thank you. Bye. I'll follow up by email. <laughs> Bye.